Hey everybody, this is Zachary Jeans, and let's keep walking. So today is day four of our Bible read-through of the New Testament and our little study time. Uh, got a couple little candles going. I hope hope you're having a, a good winter, a good start to the new year. Um, today we're going to be in chapter three of Matthew, but before we get going, let's uh, let's stop and ask God for help. God, please help. Please help me be a good teacher and a good listener. And Lord, help those that are going through your word uh, hear from you. And uh, I pray that you'll uh, speak to them and uh, transform their hearts. Lord, I love you. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, I love this uh, candle. It's a mahogany leather. Yeah. Such a bro candle, right? Anyway. A little candle, a little coffee, and a little Bible. So, chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said... The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment, a camel's hair, and a leather belt round his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about Jordan River were going out to him, and they were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But... When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit, it's cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he'll be clearing his threshing floor and gathering his wheat into the barn. But the chaff, he'll burn with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest upon him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I'm well pleased. Wow. So in Matthew's account here of John the Baptist and his ministry, we get a couple things. We get establishing, like John the Baptist just wasn't a rando, right? Um, we'll see in, in Luke who he was born to and whatnot. He actually is a cousin of Jesus. Uh, by a fairly miraculous birth to an, old, an older woman named Elizabeth and Zechariah. But he is a fulfillment that God said that he would send uh, a person, uh, uh, a messenger before his Messiah. And that's Isaiah here, about 700-ish years before this event occurs, maybe 750 years, uh, how you count it. And John himself lived this holy life out in the wilderness, uh, you know, basically eschewing the things of uh, 
all pleasure and, and, and whatnot, and just living a very singular life with a singular purpose to prepare the way for this Messiah, this one who was to come. And although Jesus had all these events happen when he was a baby, I mean, he kind of had a sort of normal childhood growing up. And people didn't really know for sure, you know, was that some weird thing? Only a few people knew about it. But you had this one preparing the way and he was baptizing people in the Jordan, basically giving them a chance to just come clean with God and go into the water and pop up out of the water. And, hey, this is sort of a, a refresher, a re a dedication to God um, in an Old Testament sort of sense. And then lo and behold, Jesus comes and John recognizes that not only is this his cousin, but he's like, whoa, wait a minute, that's you. You're the one. And when Jesus and him work it out that, okay, we're going to do this. I'm going to let you baptize me. Comes out. And this is when God's spirit, the Holy Spirit comes down and is visual to John. And it rests upon him almost kind of like a dove, right? And he knows and he hears the voice of the Father from heaven. This is my, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So anyway, till next time, let's uh, keep walking, okay? God bless. Bye-bye.